welcome, welcome to another episode of Spark the Brain from the late great Tupac Shakur. We want to spark the brain that will change the world. Uh, today we have another young gentleman that's doing great work in the community here at Life Camp. Jafari, what's up, brother? How what's you doing? Up, I'm doing good, bro. How you doing? How are you? So talk to us about like what do you do on the day to day here at uh, Life Camp? All right. So on the day to day, I'm a hospital responder. So basically, my job is to reach out uh, to community members that's been victim of gun violence, and basically um, be that link to the resources that Life Camp has to them. Right. I'm not enrolled to these um, individuals who was a victim of gun violence, stabbings, jumpings, mm -hmm. any type of a traumatic injury. And basically I just get them the resources that they need, emotional resources, physical resources, spiritual resources, so they can they start to heal, not just the physically, but holistically, the mind, body, and soul. So, um, so that's what, that's, what I, that's my day to day. What's, what's the hardest part about like, you know, reaching out to people and trying to help them? Like, the hardest part of reaching out to people and trying to help them is sometimes um, you can't help them because they die. You know, sometimes they succumb to their gunshot victims, and by the time you get there, families already crying, they already grieving, and um, but then you still have to help the family because the family is also a victim too. So you know, going through that process and um, you know walking them through that, you know, that's the hardest part. How do you take care of your emotional balance um, going through this? Because I know it takes a toll on you personally. How do you work on yourself at the same time? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, first, I gotta I gotta tell myself that uh, I'm, I, maybe I wasn't help wasn't able to help this individual, but I'm able to help this individual, right? Mm -hmm. So when I do succeed in providing these resources to these individuals, that helps me. Right, and that helps me. I hold on to that, you know. And I do a lot of things outside of a uh, life camp to help me heal, you know. Um, I do boxing. I'm a martial artist, you know. I'm a, I'm a martial arts instructor, so I teach. So that helps, you know. Um, I have a daughter, so taking care of my family, going home and having my family to lean on, mm -hmm. my wife to lean on, that helps me a lot. Yeah. She keeps me grounded. Um, yeah, I work out. I like to work out. I'm big on working out, going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, so just um, getting that uh, extra frustration off anything I can in the gym, boxing gym, lifting weights. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what drew you to that? I know some people, they is like, it seemed cool. Some people like, nah, I went through this, that. So that's what drew me. What drew you to like this field? What drew me to this field was, um, well, my mother was the one who introduced me into this, right? Because, you know, in high school, I was, I, was, I influenced a lot of violence, you know, in my community. Um, and then one day she found the phone, and I had all types of stuff on this phone, money and all types of other stuff I don't even want to mention. And uh, she was contemplating. She was like, yo, I don't know what to do. Should I go to the police? That's what she told me. She said she was going to go to the police. And then but on her way there, she saw a life camp. And she saw the anti-gun violence um, in particular, you know. So she was like, okay, nah, I'm going to bring him here. So she gave me a call. You know, that's my mom. So I loved her. So I came. I came. I sat down. And there was individuals here, you know, that I, I felt like I could relate to. Because, you know, my mom really could have talked to me. She she was, uh, she adopted me. She was born in the 50s. So she was she was more like a grandmother age, mm -hmm. not really my mom. So she really could have understand what I was going through. So when I was able to talk to somebody that, that, that came from my community mm -hmm. who had similar experiences, I felt comfortable listening to them, you know, opening my ear to them and to consider what they had to say. And then from there, you know, I started working to the program. I was always a small kid. I always was knew what was good for me. Mm -hmm. And I saw that like him was good for me. So I stuck with it um, as a participant. And then, um, you know, over the years, I'm improving my life year by year, day by day. And then eventually, um, like Erica Ford, she, 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 I had just got fired for one of my jobs. I was sleeping on the job. I was working security at the airport. And then that morning, I was walking home. And Erica, because I, I lived around the corner, Erica pulled up. She was like, you need work? She's like, you make a good hospital responder. Because I, I was volunteering in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She's like, you make a good hospital response. I was like, okay, yeah, I need some work right now. I just got fired. She didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, wasn't going to tell her. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she was like, yeah. So I was like, yeah. So then a um, couple weeks later, I came in for the interview. I got the job. 
Yeah, I've been here ever since. Mm. And what do you want to be remembered as? Like, you know, when you old, like, some people are like, yeah, I just want to be kind of remembered, but like what you want, like, people to always say about you. Oh, that was a fighter. You know, that I fought for my community. I fought for the youth. The youth, I'm big on the youth. I love the youth in my community. Um, I just I just want my youth to say, yeah, I remember Jafari. Jafari was the one who, you know, helped me get on track, who, who, who put his hand out to help me. That's all I want to remember, you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this part of the show, um, it's called Conversations with Your Younger Self. What are three pieces of advice that you would give your younger self? Uh, three pieces of advice I give to my younger self. Study money a lot. Financial literacy. Um, what else? Study money. I would say love my mom's good. And finally, the last thing I would say to myself Value, value my friends, man. I lost a lot of friends, so value my, value my friends, man. Mm. I got a question, actually. Um, Cause you mentioned you have a daughter, right? Yeah, I, have a I was daughter. gonna say, like, you know, the generations now are changing, but at the same time, some stuff still go on. Um, I was gonna say, what's your advice for, like, you know, the, the young kids coming up, or more so, like, what do you think can change for them? Like, something that needs to happen. Something that needs to happen. We need to start homeschooling our kids, man. Mm. Right, because we. We depend on a, a, a system, right, that our oppressors created, like the, the grandfathers of the president, people that still continue in that system, and those individuals that those individuals that can, that created that system, never created that system for us, and then we either praise or punish our children based on how good they do in that system, which doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, let's create our own system. Let's let's start to educate. Let's create these homeschool cohorts. Like I'm not sending my daughter to no public school, no private. She's gonna be homeschooled. She's gonna go to some Afrocentric school that, and then she's gonna learn about her, mm -hmm. her history. That's mm -hmm. it. You know? mm -hmm. That's real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that was powerful, man. Thank you for coming on today. Um, you're doing amazing work. Um, not many people have the heart to step into what you're doing. And for you to be able to do this in this time, um, we appreciate all of us here, appreciate what you're doing, honestly. Just sitting here talking to you and just the fact that you respond to these situations and you do it with an open heart and you want to help and, and make that impact, it's a beautiful thing. And thank you, bro. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. Thank it, you, bro. you are a spark in the brain. Oh, I appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Man. Thank you. All right, man. We out of here.